Hello and welcome to another Escape from Tarkov guide. Today we are going to go over how to kill Gluhar and his goons. Now Gluhar spawns on reserve and he will spawn on the map on screen in the red areas. Now I personally prefer to fight him in the night buildings in the middle there you see with a little night piece. Reason being is my preferred method of fighting any boss is from range, is from distance, because if you are out of their, you know, line of sight and their ability to shoot back, one, most bosses use automatic weapons, and two, most of them use grenades. So being further away from them just gives you that much more time and survivability if they do throw grenades at you and whatnot. So if I was going to fight these bosses, I'd probably try and fight them from the green areas shown on screen. Now I have listed the LMGs and the mounted grenade launchers because if you can get if they're in position and you get on one of those grenade launchers or the LMGs you can absolutely shred the bosses and it's one of the fastest and easiest ways to kill Gluhar and his goons is by getting on one of those and just absolutely taking them to pieces so keep that in mind if maybe if you're a scav you spawn in or you're just spawning in low gear and you don't have to get take them on but he's there try and jump on one of them LMGs and this map shows in blue where potential raiders could come into the fight. So say you're fighting in the train yard buildings and someone pulls a lever, you might then have to fight the guards and raiders as well. Now, the weapons I would suggest taking on Gluhar are ranged weapons that are... Personally, I wouldn't use a bolt action, I would go with a semi-automatic, like an SVD, M1A, or a Hunter. Those would be the three weapons I would choose to take out Gluhar, simply because I wouldn't be going close quarters combat with them. Reason being, is, you know, fighting one enemy in a CQP situation is difficult. Fighting potentially seven enemies, Gluhar and up to six goons, it's going to go badly. Well, for me it is. I'm not the best Tarkov player. That's why I prefer to take him from a distance where I can just pick him off and all of his goons and come in and deal with the one or two that's left. Now, the weapons, uh, not the weapons, the armors, the rig and the bag I would, you know, suggest is for the bag, I'd go tri-zip. It's really big, it's quite cheap, and you're not losing a lot of money if you have to ditch it to go to the sewer manhole. The rig, I would go with the belt A and B rig, or the Afghan as it's more colloquially known. Reason being it's 25 slots. That's a lot of slots for the itty bitty weapons and things that are, you know, the grenades, the medical items and the rounds that spawn on Gluhar and his guards. Now armor, personally, I wouldn't go above class 4. Reason being is, I'm not planning to fight Gluhar or any of his goons in CQB. I'm planning to take them out from another building, from a, a fair distance away, so I don't plan on getting hit. And another reason is, if I'm running a Gen 5, I don't want to throw that Gen 5 away. And if I kill his guard and his guard's got a, you know, a gazelle body armor on, and I'm running that class 4, I can dump that class 4, that's cheap. You know what I mean? That class 4 cost you, what, 60, 80k? The gazelles were 1300, uh, 130,000. I'm willing to risk not, risk not getting that class 4 back in insurance so I can just dump that. Now, what we need to know about Gluhar. Gluhar spawns with up to 6 goons with him, so you could be fighting 7 people, as I said before. And all of them can be different variations. If you've ever fought them, and you've put a bullet in one dude and he's dropped, put a bullet in the next and he hasn't dropped, it's probably because they're different classifications of enemy. So Gluhar himself has like 990 health and you want something with a lot of damage to take his head. He has 70 points of health in his head slot alone, so you're going to need something like an SVD round or you know an M1A round 7.62 by 51 to one shot him in the head effectively. And the other guys, the Assault, the Scout, and the Security, they all have less health than Gluhar, but way more than the average Scav, with the Scout being the lowest amount of health his, one of his guards can have. And you top all this large health pool off with the Class 4 to Class 5 to Class 6 armor as they wear, helmet and chest, they are formidable opponents. That's why I like to take them from a distance. Because even if you're running the best ammo, if you're running M995, you've still got to plink away at them and unload on them. You know, a 60 round mag might kill one of them if you're lucky through the armor and through all the health they have. So why would you actually want to fight these monstrosities? Well, the loot. Plain and simple, 
these are some of the densest loot AIs in the game. Better than Raiders and better than some bosses. So here we have the first goon I killed. He had a Zisha helmet on with an AKM. You know, I wouldn't bother with the body armor. It's not worth it. Um, the other loot I wouldn't bother with the AKM at, personally. And I would always check what ammo they're using because if he's using BPs, 90 rounds of BP at 800 rubles is a lot of money. And I would definitely pick up the grenades. The grenades are one slot value of, you know, 11,000 for the F1s and then I think 15 to 20,000 for the VOGs. That's just, that, that stacks up. If you get 7 to 12 grenades per full, you know, clear of Gluhar, it's easy money. And as you can see, this one's wearing that Afghan rig I was telling you about, and it is massive. Really good for this map, especially if you need to use a Red Rebel to get out. Which I would advise. It's very... The, the, res, the, the extractions on reserve aren't brilliant for players. Now, the second kill, the second goon I killed, had a gazelle body armor on. Now, this is 130,000 rubles. You know, I, I would switch out my armor for that. The AK, if I didn't find any better weapons on them... I would take that, but ordinarily you're going to find a better weapon on the guards and whatnot, and you don't want your backpack filled with weapons because it's less money. Now the Kedar here, because it's got a PK-06 on top and a flashlight on bottom, you can take that one slot item off, and that's the equivalent of nearly 41, 45k. So always make sure you're stripping them off the front of them Kedars. Again, here they had BT rounds, and BT rounds are nearly 500 to 800 rubles a shot. Especially when you get them the find and raid status because you've got them off a, you know, a scav boss. I would honestly spend the time unpacking those if you feel safe enough in a, a raid. That would definitely increase your profits. And I'd also pick up the medical supplies. One, because if you get in a fight on the way out, you're carrying an ambulance on your back. But also, um, you know what I mean, you always buy an IFAX, even if you don't sell them. The total cost of not buying $16,000 16, ruble IFAX every time is good. See here with the PP-19, I would strip the silencer off the front, and that's probably it. Silencer's worth about 20 grand, that's what I'd go for. And the pistol, I would take if no one else had a pistol, you know what I mean? It's a free slot, it's free 15 grand rubles. I would leave his body armor and helmet because it's pretty bad. See, this goon was a like a bad goon to kill. Like, he didn't have any good ammo in his guns, he didn't have any, he didn't have much grenades. His armor was terrible, his weapon was eh. So it's goons like this where, you know, you probably stumble across this one as a scav and he'd be fully, like, you know, just everything left on him, there'd be nothing left. But 98,000 for one, you know, kill is not that bad. So you could probably kill some scavs that have more money in their backpacks and guns than the 98,000, but... On the fourth goon, that helmet's pretty good. I'd probably toss my helmet if I'd only brought in one of those level 3 helmets, which really all you need when you're fighting from a distance. The gazelle again, I would put it in the backpack. If you've got a tri-zip, that backpack's still able to put a weapon in with one of the gazelles in them. And that M4 is actually worth a lot of money. Reason being is the buttstock on that sells for about 40k and the mag itself sells for about 30. And again with a Keda, you've got that PK-06 on top which that alone is going for 30,000 rubles. Now the M4 I'd probably just take as an entire gun, and then you've got the extra mags as well. Uh, 360 rounders with, you know, 180 rounds of M856A1, I believe it was. They're going for 500 rounds, uh, like, you know, 500 rubles per round. That's 90,000 rubles and about three slots. That's not bad value. But you see, this is why I'd take them from a distance, you know what I mean? Look how, look how many of these guys have automatic weapons. You engage that in a close quarters fight, Personally, I'm not good enough to do that, and if you're watching this guy, chances are you're not comfortable either in, you know, raiding a building with, you know, seven of these guys in it, and I don't blame you, because I wouldn't like to do it, not in an online mode when I'm risking, you know, 200, 300, 400,000 worth of kit. The LZSH probably wouldn't pick it up, it's not a massive amount of money, it's not that good, but the Ash-12 on the other hand, because it's got the Valde on top, it's worth nearly 100,000 rubles. Especially because the mag in it is worth 20,000 rubles itself. And this is Gluhar himself, by the way, so, you know, I just forgot to mention that. The APS, I'd pick that up over the Grax, so that means that pistol's worth about 30,000. And it's a free slot, you know what I mean? Like, you usually don't pick a pistol in. 
the ammo he was using was terrible. It's something like 100 rubles per round, so I would not bother taking that out. And this was a bad glue hawk kill, you know what I mean? Like, the M1A is worth more. He could have spawned with an RPK with tons of good rounds. He didn't have any body armor. It was a really bad kill, really. The grenades, that M67 is worth nearly 30,000 on the marketplace at the moment because there's none on there, so find any of them, keep them. And the key card, 270,000 rubles. Always loot Gluhar's pockets first. If you down them all and it's safe to loot, loot Gluhar first and go through his pockets because if he spawns any kind of chromatic key card, red, blue, black, green, whatever colour, that's millions. You know, it can range from 2 million to 40, 50, 60 million if you get the red key card. Always go through his pockets first. Right, so I ended up killing four goons and the big man himself. And you can see a bit of disparity in there. Some of them were worth nearly half a mil, some of them were worth less than 100. But it all came out to about 1.6 million rubles, rounding up that extra thousand. So if you divide it by that by five, that's about 319,000 per kill, or 320,000 rubles per kill. Not a bad haul. Now, realistically, I went through and looked at what you could pick up in this scenario looking at slot space and just wait and I came out with about 1.4 million rubles so if you killed them all and you went through and picked all of that up that's how much money you could be respectively make now we're going to close out with a few tips now again a tip I would always give is if you can bring a friend along that makes killing bosses so much easier and most bosses drop more loot than any one player can carry, so it just makes sense except Killer. But, you know, he's, he's his own, you know, loot, um, loot pinata. So let's go through them. Loot the pockets first. Good one. If you've got a red rebel, that makes sure you've got an extract. Yeah, you have to toss your armor and you lose about maybe 100 to 200,000 rubles. But if you've killed Gluhar and made, you know, a million, it's, it evens out. Work off the principle, there's always another goon, so there's another guard out there. If you've, Even if you've killed six, and I've told you in this video, he should only have six guards. Work on the principle, there's another one. Because if you don't, and there is one, you know, you, you should have a look. But if you do work on that principle and there isn't, it's better to be safe than sorry, that's what I'm saying. Stay out of nade distance, that's what I'd recommend, that's, you know, just... It makes the fight so much easier when you don't have them air bursts coming down on you. Retreat if attacked by another player. That's what I would do. I would retreat. Hopefully they engage the scav boss and you can come in and pick them off as they're exposing their position. That's, you know, you don't want to fight scav boss and player at the same time. Gluar has a 43% spawn chance and I think that was upped. So I'm not if that, sure if that's accurate. But work on the principle. Every other raid he's going to be there. Um, the ammo in the weapon may be worth more than the weapon itself. Case in point, that M4 had a, lo um, had a lot of money in it. And, you know what I mean? If it, had got a, if it had been an RPK with a 90 round mag with 90 rounds of 7N39, that mag alone would be worth more than the entire gun. Strip the attachments from weapons. You know, just open them up and get them control click them off the weapon. And it'll just increase how much money you make. And again, there can be up to six guards, and always keep that in mind. That number is important. And that is going to be it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed, and if you want video making, or you know there's something wrong with this video in particular, you know there's something I've misinterpreted, there's something I've you might have made a mistake, do, you know, feel free to correct me in the comments below. You know, this channel is about getting the correct information out there, so if I've made a mistake, make sure you correct me on that one. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time.